In this video, we'll look at the history and terminology of unmanned aerial systems. In the second video, we'll look at how the Australian Army came to be where it is today, as we prepare for the future of more unmanned systems, both in the air and on the ground. First, let's talk about terminology. Most people call these devices drones. A drone, in the correct sense, is a bee whose sole job is fertilizing the queen bee. It has no sting and so is not a protector of the hive and it doesn't gather pollen or look after larvae. So the term came to mean someone who is lazy or who does not think for himself and may do a single job without objection. The term drone, when used to refer to aircraft without a pilot, started in 1946 referring to mindless aircraft that were used for target practice. There are two correct terms in common use today to describe such an aircraft. In the military, it is an unmanned aerial vehicle. In civilian speak, the preferred term is remotely piloted aircraft. The two terms are UAV or RPA. For this video, we shall call them UAVs. But a UAV is only part of the whole system. A UAV has to be controlled from somewhere else. A ground-based handheld radio transmitter is normally used for the control of small UAVs. For larger aircraft, this may take the form of a ground control station or GCS. The whole system, which includes the unmanned aerial vehicle, the radio transmitter or ground control station, and all the other equipment required to complete the mission such as software, onboard equipment, computers, etc., is collectively known as an unmanned aerial system or UAS and it is this term that we shall use to describe the air vehicle and the control equipment. So to recap, a system that consists of an unmanned aerial vehicle, radio control equipment, software, hardware, and onboard payloads such as cameras or weapons is known as an unmanned aerial system or UAS. In Australian civil aviation, the term remotely piloted aircraft system or RPAS is used. The first serious attempts at using UAVs in warfare were during the 19th century using balloon UAVs when Austria, laying siege to Venice, sent incendiary laden balloons over the city. This same type of unmanned aerial weapon was used in World War II by the British in Europe and by the Japanese in the Pacific, which sent over 9,000 balloon bombs drifting from Japan to Canada and the United States, carried by the jet stream. When over land, it would drop an incendiary bomb in an attempt to start bushfires and to cause panic. Even today, Palestinians in Gaza are using incendiary kites and balloons to bomb Israel. During World War I, an experimental weaponized fixed-wing UAV was developed. It was called the Kettering Torpedo and relied on a timer that controlled the engine. The users would calculate the wind speed and the direction and how long it would take the aerial torpedo to fly over the enemy. They would then program the clockwork timer to cut fuel to the engine, after which time the device would crash to earth and explode. A similar weapon was used by Hitler to attack London during World War II. The Vengeance Weapon No. 1, or V1, was a pulse engine powered flying bomb that had a gyroscope to keep it level. Its launcher was pointed towards London and it blasted off from France. Its engine was a rapid pulse jet which gave it a buzzing sound, thus the name Buzz Bomb. In the United States, small remote controlled aircraft known as OQ-2s were manufactured by the company Radioplane for target practice. Interesting trivia, the company's owner, Reginald Denny, requested that the Army do a story on his factory. He contacted Captain Ronald Reagan from the Army's PR division. He would, of course, later become the 40th President of the United States, and asked for a photographer to be sent over. One of his workers, Norma Jean Baker, was photographed, and this led to her doing a screen test for the movies. She changed her name to Marilyn Monroe, and she became a famous movie star and sex symbol. On the other side of the world, in Europe, Operation Aphrodite used remote-controlled bombers filled with explosives to crash into German targets. One pilot, Lieutenant Joseph Kennedy, took off in one such bomber, a B-24 Liberator. His job was to take off and climb to cruise altitude and then bail out over England. Unfortunately, his bomber blew up prematurely and he was killed. He had been groomed for politics by his influential and ambitious father, but with his death, his father turned his attention to the next oldest son, U.S. Navy Lieutenant John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who had become the 35th President of the United States. 
After World War II, more research went into unmanned aircraft. Most were used for aerial target practice, including the successful Australian Jindavik and the Ryan Fire Bee. It wasn't until the Israelis, who were constantly in conflict with their neighbours, began developing UAS in the 1970s and 80s, that we saw a significant leap forward in military UAVs, including those used by the ADF. However, for a UAS to be useful, it needs to carry a payload. This may be an explosive payload, but more commonly it is some form of camera or some other detecting device. All UAS these days will have the same componentry. It will have a payload, the aerial vehicle, a ground control station which will include a radio transmitter and a user interface. It will have a stabilizing system, it may end up performing navigation, it may have some form of launcher, it may have some form of retrieval system, and finally it must have a remote pilot or a person to program its functions. As more and more unmanned aircraft started appearing in military inventories, the need to classify them emerged. Many different names have been used for naming UAVs, but if it appears in the US military inventory, it will have the letter Q as part of its nomenclature. For example, the Shadow 200, used by the Australian Army, is also used by the US Army, where it is called the RQ-7. R for reconnaissance, Q for UAV, and the number 7 in the acquisition chain. Another example is the RQ-1 Predator, or the MQ-9 Reaper, where M stands for multi-mission. For other UAVs, the manufacturer's names are often still used, such as the Israeli Aerospace Industries IAI Heron or the IAI Skylark. The type of UAV also decides terminology. Some UAVs use fixed wings and others use rotary wings, and yet others may be lighter than air or use flexible wings. The DJI family of UAS currently authorised for use within the Army uses multiple rotors, so are known in the Australian Army as Multi-Rotor Unmanned Aerial Systems, or MRUAS. When referring to something that is available commercially and is off the shelf, it is a COTS system, commercial off the shelf. The DJI company manufactures the Phantom and Mavic systems, so these are known as COTS MRUAS, Commercial Off the Shelf Multi-Rotor Unmanned Aerial Systems. In part two of this video, we'll see where we are now in the Australian Army in the field of unmanned aerial systems.